Yeah, so I think basically uh, the government has fully liberalized the banking system uh, in 2014, and you have the entry of a couple of foreign banks. So most of these are the Japanese, the Korean, and the uh, Thai Taiwanese bank. Uh, in terms of competitive landscape, not much has changed. Uh, the conglomerate, the large uh, family-owned banks continue to dominate the Philippine banking system. A lot of these foreign banks that I mentioned, they only entered the country in the last one year, and they mainly service their home country customers. So, you know, the large conglomerates, the large, uh, the F F Filipinos will continue to bank with the uh, large domestic banks, whereas the foreign banks will service their niche uh, home country customers. Now, um, let's talk about what you said in your report. You have economic risk trends that's still at stable and industry risk uh, trending at stable. Having said that, you did mention one thing that struck our attention, that consumer loans, while they're 18% roughly of the loan portfolio, are double the size of the average non-performing loan. How much of a risk is that for you? And secondly, with the entry of a credit information bureau coming in this year, how much of a mitigant will that be? Uh, yes, so we see as a growing risk, uh, as you correctly mentioned, as a percentage of total loans uh, is still quite a small portion. But you know, the, 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 the delinquency experience on the consumer loans is actually twice the corporate loans. So uh, the returns that the uh, banks get on the consumer loans is uh, significantly more than what they can get from lending to a large conglomerate. So a lot of the Philippine banks in general are aggressively pursuing consumer loans growth which uh, also tells us that the average non-performing loans in the system can go up. Now, there's a couple of reasons why this is so. Uh, firstly, you'll notice that uh, compared to other ASEAN economies in the region, the unemployment rate and also the underemployment rate in the Philippines is quite high, right? So this will kind of uh, negatively impact the ability of consumers to repay on their loan. Uh, the second thing is up to today, there has been a lack of a comprehensive uh, consumer cre credit bureau or information system. Uh, I understand that they are still in the data collection stage and uh, you know, the, the availability of consumer information will go live in 2017 next year. So until then, you know, we see this as a growing risk, but still uh, no, noting that it's still one, consumer lending is still less than one-fifth of the uh, banking se sector exposure at this point. Okay. So Ivan, you mentioned upside risk and an interim period where there is a vacuum in terms of reform. But one of the things that hit the Philippine banking sector, as we all know, is the bank heist in Bangladesh. And it's highlighting risks in terms of security and bank procedures. What can the current government do to strengthen confidence in the banking sector to ensure these things don't happen again to improve the banking landscape? Yeah, so I think this is just uh, specific to RCBC Bank. You know, they have take, take, taken a hit on the uh, reputation of the bank. But generally, if you look at the banking system as a whole, there has been no uh, real systemic impact on the banking system as a whole. Uh, the uh, consumer confidence in the Philippine banking system compared, uh, con continues to be strong, and we have not seen a bank run so, so, so far, right? So the liquidity and the stability of the de deposit in the Philippine banking system continues to be strong. So I think this is very specific to the risk management practices of the individual bank. I understand that RCBC has uh, changed in some of their man, man, management staff, and I'm quite sure that they will also kind of beef out the risk management processes going forward as well.